Yo, what's up guys, Sam here, and today I wanna to show you a ton of hidden features for your iPhone 13 or iPhone 13 Pro that I bet you didn't know about. Rather than focusing this video on the big camera upgrades or the all new screen on the Pro models, I wanted to dive a little bit deeper and show you guys some really interesting things that Apple doesn't mention on their site or show anywhere else. So if you're excited for this one, drop a like down below, hit subscribe for more, let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so first up, the speakers on the iPhone 13 are like insanely good. Now, I'm not gonna say that they replace like an actual speaker system by any means, but if you compare it to an iPhone 12, I just want you guys to hear the difference. And keep in mind, this is through video, so the differences in person are even more dramatic. I was a fan of reruns and old movies. It's silly, but it's true for me. I was a fan of reruns and old movies. It's silly, but it's true for me. Oh, I needed to be sure of that story ends. It's easy for me to stay right where it's safe and sound. Oh, I needed to be sure of that story ends. It's easy for me to stay right where it's safe and sound. Not only does the well, iPhone 13 get quite a bit louder from my experience, the quality is a lot better. The mids are not as muddied and all cluttered together. There's a much better separation for me between the highs and the lows. And while the bass is still pretty much non-existent on all iPhones, I mean, this is the biggest speaker upgrade I can remember in recent history. With the phones being a little bit thicker this year, in addition to a larger battery fitting inside, I guess Apple also decided to upgrade the speaker modules too. And I have to say, I'm I'm pretty impressed. They, they sound good, right? Again, it's a phone speaker, but it's the best iPhone speaker I've ever heard. Next up, by far the most obvious change on the front of the iPhone 13 is a smaller notch. And Apple says it's 20% smaller, although side by side it looks quite a bit smaller than the notch that we've had since 2017. But what they don't tell you is that it's actually a bit taller as well. Not a big deal, right? Because when you're holding your phone in portrait mode, it looks phenomenal. But if you flip your phone over to watch a video that isn't in the standard 16 by 9 format, like the video this was uploaded in, if you're watching on the iPhone 13, the notch actually actually cuts into what you're looking at now. Yeah, honestly, I'm not that sorry for showing you this because somebody had to tell you the truth sooner or later, but it is 20% smaller. I love that, yet it is a little bit taller and it kind of messes up the phone video format now. So it's just got me completely reevaluating how I upload videos. And of course, getting a new phone, it's really exciting to take it out of the box initially. But this year, the experience is quite a bit different. There is no plastic wrap on the outside of the iPhone. Instead, it's been replaced by these two sticker pull tabs. You peel it off the top and the bottom and then the phone just kind of lifts up, but it definitely gave me the impression that somebody had had this phone before because it, it was weird to open a new piece of tech without plastic all around it. But packaging aside, I have to say it's what's not on the inside that is still the most frustrating. You get your phone, obviously, and a lightning to USB-C cable, but yet again, Apple has removed the charger from the box, which is exactly why I partnered up with Spigen, who sponsored today's video, to show you guys their Spigen Power Arc duo of the ArcStation Pro and incredible Arcfield magnetic wireless charger. First up, the charger is more advanced than anything that Apple sells using the newest gallium nitrate technology. It essentially means they're packing more wattage that is cooler in a smaller package. The GAN chargers range from 20 all the way up to 100 watts, so you could even use these for devices like your iPad or MacBook, and again, get the fastest speeds with the latest tech. And when you combine it with this sleek Arcfield magnetic wireless charger that's mostly aluminum and all black, it gives you not only the fastest charging speeds, it also just looks really cool because Apple doesn't sell a black magnetic charger. But Spigen also has these really nice lightning cables that are definitely not going to fray or break because you can tell they're reinforced, they feel a lot better, and they come with a nice Velcro strap so that you can wrap it up at any time. It, it's just really nice and that's a great option too. So if you guys want to check these out, I'll leave links down below to both of the Spigen Power Arc products and you can charge faster and better than ever before. Or you know it all because Apple doesn't include a charger. All right, I want to pivot over to the iPhone 13 camera systems now, starting off with the pros, because obviously you're paying the most here, you are by far getting the most advanced cameras on any iPhone, or I would argue phone ever. And for the first time, Apple has included a macro lens on the iPhone 13 Pro. So you'll notice when you get up close to something that it kind of cuts and does something weird on your viewfinder. Like you're here, 
and then you scoot up a little bit and all of a sudden it, it switches lenses. That's because it's automatically switching to the ultra wide macro lens to allow you to get the best shot. And I don't even consider myself a particularly talented photographer, but the images I've been able to capture with the new macro lens are just unbelievable. I have never had this much fun shooting on my iPhone and here's just a few images that I'm overlaying here that I was able to take. It's insane and I'd love to hear about your experiences with the macro camera down below. But it wasn't just the ultra wide lens that Apple touched this year, they also improved the telephoto lens, bringing true night mode there. So now you can do a long exposure to get the best possible photo at night using the longest focal length lens that traditionally has not had night mode. So obviously the photos look insane, but what about video, specifically the new cinematic video feature that Apple has introduced, where you can look away from the camera and it will switch subjects and then back to you when you face the camera, and even the ability to edit the blur and the focus after you've shot the video. It's out of this world. What isn't so cool is that this only records in 1080p, and I didn't know that until I started looking into things a bit closer, but cinematic video is not in 4K on any iPhone. Even if you get the best iPhone 13 or the cheapest iPhone 13, you can only shoot cinematic video in 1080. Very interesting how Apple did not bring that up in the keynote whatsoever. They were just talking about how miraculous it was, which it is, to be completely fair. The tech here is out of this world, but the resolution is pretty 2010. But really looking at this camera system and taking it into the dark is when I've noticed the biggest changes physically on the back. I mean, obviously the lenses have gotten a bit larger and the standard 13 sees the crisscross lenses this year, but I've also noticed there's a lot more light bleed from the entire module. In fact, side by side, you've got the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 13, of which the iPhone 12 had some light bleed and the iPhone 13 just shows this really cool design when you cover up the lens and it just sort of protrudes underneath the entire system. And you also get this on the pros for the first time this year as well. So next time somebody says there's nothing new with the iPhone 13, just shut off the lights, call the electric company, turn off their power, and walk in with your finger covered on the light, and they'll say, wow, I'm getting an iPhone 13 right now. You were right. But on top of everything else, the new camera system, especially on the standard size iPhone 13 and 13 mini, also makes the phones wobble and sit more flat than they have in forever, which is kind of counterintuitive. I mean, don't get me wrong, the pros are still pretty rocky, but the standard 13 and the 13 mini don't go back and forth as much, which yeah, Yes, there is still a huge camera bump, but it's the least rocky it's been since I think we've gotten a camera bump. But right now, it's still pretty annoying on the iPhone 13 series. Yet next year, that's going to be going away, finally. Apple is going to be basically reinventing the iPhone 4 with the iPhone 14 next year, and the entire rear glass is going to be raised, which is going to obviously make it not rock and just look insane. So a little tidbit, just wanted to show you guys ahead of next year's phone. Next up, the iPhone 13s also support dual eSIM functionality. So you you can actually have one eSIM from one carrier and one eSIM from another, but no physical SIM on your phone. In fact, Verizon shipped my iPhone that I have right here without a physical SIM, and it was all eSIM this year. And eSIM is just software-based instead of physical, and you can probably call your carrier and ask them to set it up that way instead of a physical version if you'd like, and now you can do two of those electronic ones rather than just one. Moving on, you probably already know that there's an insanely powerful chip in here, the most powerful chip in a smartphone ever, but actually, it's not if you have an iPhone 13. There's actually a smartphone more powerful than the iPhone 13, and for the first time in iPhone history, it's the Pro version. Well, going into some benchmark software like Geekbench, you will see the CPUs are pretty much identical, give or take a few points for just how the test runs. It's when you go into the GPU performance that the Pros are significantly better, and that's because they literally have an extra GPU core. And listen, by no means does this suggest that you have to get an iPhone 13 Pro to have good performance. It just means if you are doing a lot of GPU heavy tasks like playing a lot of games or running 3D models or using augmented reality, like you could actually see some better performance quite significantly on the Pro models this year. Which on top of the 120 hertz displays, upgraded camera systems, and insanely good battery life makes for me the iPhone 13 Pro like the best value in the lineup. Even though it's a thousand dollars, I do think you're getting the most for your money. And to round things out, there are new exclusive wallpapers inside of the settings app that are live for both the 13 and the 13. Pro. On the iPhone 13, because there are five different color options, there are five different wallpapers that you get on all the models. I can't think of a better term other than a spinny animation that has a lot of colors and looks really, really nice. But if you go over to the pros, you get this zoom in light beam animation that Apple hasn't shown in any of their marketing. And it was actually the first time I had seen it when I just press and held my lock screen. I know I say this every year that the new wallpapers are the best Apple's ever done, but no, genuinely this year, I think they're really, really good. And there's just something satisfying 
line for the first time seeing this at 120 hertz on the pros i'm like whoa my my brain the endorphins the chemicals they're just they're popping off out here and uh you know i gotta i gotta watch my screen time anyway guys those are my hidden features and other secrets for the iphone 13 things that i bet you didn't know so if you enjoyed this one drop a like down below it does seriously help me in the channel out and of course hit subscribe so you're always staying up to date year round on the latest apple news i've been sam hope you're doing well and i'll see you in the next one peace